If you have to roll a two plus to charge, don't roll a one. Hey guys, what's up? Today I'll be talking about some statistical facts concerning conquest. Keep in mind that no matter what I say in this video, do not use the information I give you as an out of context standard to judge the game. What does that mean? It is irrelevant if I say Dweg are the strongest army in the game, and then when you and your one opponent in your local area play, and you are 100 kingdoms and your opponent is Wadroon, that statistic is irrelevant. If you can't beat your Wadroon opponent, it doesn't matter if statistically 100k beats Wadroon. A grand meta of what most people talk about when they talk about wargaming does not exist. It is irrelevant. The only meta that matters to you is your meta, you and your friends. If you are the type of person who travels and goes to tournaments and events, then this supposed grand meta might matter to you. But in my opinion, Conquest is still a young game, and it is actually well-balanced enough that you don't have to build your list around fighting the best army or ignoring the worst army. Far from it. This game is still at a state where player skill is 99% of what's going to happen in the game. This data has been compiled by me since 2.0 started in early April until today. The army that has the most first place standings in tournaments and events, it's Dweg and 100 Kingdoms. Dweg sitting at 15 and 100 Kingdoms sitting at 15. Second place for the most tournament and event standings would be Wadroon sitting at 18 and holding the spot for most third place finishes in events and tournaments would be also Wadroon. The least amount of first place standings would be Nords at only five in the past year. I think I might have gotten two or three of them. The least amount of second place standings would be City States with only three. And the least amount of third place standings would be Spires at six. Statistically, if you wanted to place in the top three of any random event or tournament, you'll want to pick Wadroon. And statistically, the army that places the least amount in the top three would be City States. Granted, City States is a newer army, and that excuse slash reason can be used for pretty much anything City States related in the past year. The least played armies would be City States and Spires, and the most played army is Wadroon. Now for some of the best and worst matchups for every army out there. For Dweg, the army you win the most against would be Nords at 66%. And the army you lose the most would be 100 kingdoms at 46%. And for Spires, the army that you can beat the most is City States at 63%. And the army you lose the most will be 100 kingdoms at 37%. For 100 kingdoms, the army you beat the most is Spires at 63%. And the army you lose the most will be Old Dominion at 45%, which I found very interesting. For Old Dominion, the army you beat the most is 100 Kingdoms at 55%, and the army you lose the most to is both Spires and Nords at 43%. For Wadroon, the army you can beat the most is Old Dominion at 56%, and the army you lose the most is Dweg at 40%. For Nords, the army you beat the most is Old Dominion at 57%, and the army that counters Nords the hardest is Dweg at 34%. For City States, the army that you can beat the most is Wadroon at 58%, and the army that beats you the most is Spires at 37%. The army that has the least spread between its worst matchup and best matchup is Old Dominion. It's only 8% between 100 Kingdoms and Spires and Nords, which means when you play as Old Dominion, you have as close to a 50% chance to win against any random opponent, the army with the most wide spread between its worst matchup and its easiest matchup would be Spires at 26%. That means when you play in an event or tournament and you want to get the, into the top three, either Spires gets countered hard by certain armies or Spires just dominate other armies completely. The best thing I can say 
for the overall statistical analysis is that the game is at the best balance it has ever been since I've been playing. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this video. It helps out the YouTube algorithm. It helps me out. It's free for you. Also, what's not free is joining my Patreon. That gives me money, which incentivizes me to spend hours a day making these videos. Thank you all. And remember, when you need a two plus to charge, make sure you're not bending statistics to feed your own bias, to sway the emotions of an audience, to agree with your subjective findings. Peace out.